to use for us and they are um, accurate and reliable, which is why I really like using them with students. There is a couple of different ways um, you can access NCY's OWL. So if you are using a computer from home, you can just Google it and it will ask you for a password. So the password for um, it for this year is wise owl 19. So that is um, all lowercase letters, um, no spaces, just wise owl 19. If um, you share that with students, they just type it in. Um, it'll a prompt will come up asking them for the password, and um, it will allow them access to the site. If you're at school, it's even easier. Um, you have um, in the app launcher. There's an NC Wise Owl icon that students can just click on. And if we're um, using the school server, we don't have to um, type anything in. It just automatically comes up. Um, there is um, something to keep in mind, though, with sharing the password with students. They ask that we don't post the password online, obviously, because anybody could um, do a Google search and find that information. So just make sure when you're um, sharing it to post it on um, closed site, so on your Google Classroom or um, your Classroom Dojo messages, anywhere um, that's just private with students is fine. Crystal? Yes. Just um, real quick, I just want to let people know why that is. Some of those, mm -hmm. some of the links are subscription. I know that you know, I just want to make sure everybody else is aware. Some of the sure. um, links are subscription based and um, because North Carolina uses tax dollars to pay for that, they're held to that copyright. Um, regulations. So um, that's why we can't um, just put it out on our website um, or Facebook pages or Class Dojo that if it might be shared. You just have to be careful about where you share the, the password. But um, it's not too difficult to figure out the pattern. So we know what next year is going to be. They're just going to change the last two digits. But that's that's kind of why. Exactly. And that's a great point. Thank you, Sandy. Um, but yeah, so like I said, you can just Google it and type in Wise Owl 19. Like Sandy mentioned, next year will probably be Wise Owl 20. Um, and then this is the home screen that comes up. There's a couple of different ways to browse. Um, most, well, all of the products are either EBSCO or Gale resources. Um, so if you have a preference, you can search that way. Um, I find the easiest ways to search, though, are either by interest level or by subject. Um, specifically, if you're working with students and kind of walking them through this, I suggest um, having them go to the, um, the content level base. So, for example, we're going to start out with some elementary products. So I'm going to go ahead and click on elementary. And then I'm going to scroll down just to kind of give you guys an idea of what um, products are here. So I'm going to start out by diving into this Britannica School Elementary. And if you guys remember Britannica Encyclopedias, this is essentially the online version of that. And I really like using this with the lower grades when I'm um, first introducing these databases with them. It's uh, the most basic of the products. Um, there is also, though, a Britannica School Middle and a Britannica School High School level. So um, if you teach high school, a lot of these um, features are going to be really similar in those separate products. So up at the top, you've got some um, just high interest material. There's almost always something about dinosaurs, um, which I appreciate because the kids get really excited about it. So if you just kind of want to let your students come on here and browse, um, there's the animal um, articles are always really interesting as well. They usually get really excited about something on the home screen. Um, but if we want to do a search for something specific, I'm going to come up here and type in solar system, you'll see it automatically brings up some recommended articles that you could click on. Um, we're going to look at the results page. And um, you do have to come over here and hit that arrow to scroll down. Um, obviously, the most relevant information is at the top, and then it kind of has related articles down below. And then off to the left hand side, you can see the different um, formats that are available. So personally, I usually stick um, with the articles and the images um, just because I feel like some of the other databases do a little bit better job of um, like displaying the magazine results, but um, they are there if you would like to use them. Um, but we're going to go ahead and click on our top result and take a look at it. So the images um, you saw on the previous page that you could just look at images if you would like. 
Um, I feel like when you go in the article, the images are a lot more targeted. So for th this example, there's only one image that we have, but um, if you wanted to look, if they had like 15 images, you, there'd be a little arrow off to the side you could browse through. You can um, choose to do different things with the image. So if you wanted to make an account and be signed in, you could favorite any images that you liked. There's a print option, email. I use the citation option quite a bit. So, so when you press it, it automatically gives you the citation. Um, and so again, when I'm showing this to students, I kind of just, even if they're not required to um, provide references for whatever they're researching, I always make sure to point that out just to um, be a good role model as being a good um, digital citizen and show them that it's there so that when they get older and they do have to do that, um, they know that they can use that tool. There's a link. And then one thing I love about all of the Wise Owl resources we're going to be talking about, um, so I'm pretty sure all of them, you can link directly to your Google Classroom. So obviously um, you have to sign in. I think mine is already signed in, yes. Um, but when you click on that, it will let you go ahead and create a link to this image. So if you wanted to use um, the materials that you found here on Wise Owl and just present everything um, on your Google Classroom, you could do that. So it does link to this site, um, but it makes it a little bit easier. They don't have to go in and do these searches themselves if um, you'd rather not have that part of the, the lesson. So looking at the article itself, obviously we've got our introduction up here and um, kind of grayed out, you'll see there's a read aloud option. The solar system consists of the sun and everything that orbits or travels. And so that's really helpful, obviously, with the lower grades or um, ESL students. Um, you can have them listen to the article rather than read it themselves. Um, over here off to the side, it's the same tools that we saw with our images. We can favorite, print, email, again, make a citation. You can also adjust the font size. And then they also have this translate option, which I think is pretty neat where you can choose to translate it to another language. And then, you know, we get to this point and everybody kind of freaks out because now your um, page is not readable to you. But if we come up here and close it, obviously it um, reverts back to, to English. So those are some accessibility features that I think are pretty neat within it. And then, um, one more thing to note, especially with the younger students, you do have to let them know to click on the gray tabs um, for more information because that's, I found something that's not really intuitive for them. Um, but obviously if you were only doing um, a lesson on how the solar system was formed, you could kind of jump to that and just share that information with your students. Again, over here, um, we could share this entire article with um, our students on Google Classroom or save it to Google Drive. Um, and that's another nice feature. Um, pretty much, again, all the products, if you um, save it to Google Drive, it'll create its own folder and um, you can go in and access those materials. So if you'd prefer to do it that way, you could save to your drive and then um, link to your Google Classroom or li link from your Google Classroom to those drive documents. Up here at the top, you'll see these numbers. Um, so these will automatically take you to the middle school and then um, level three is high school versions of the same article. So this is nice if you have um, some higher level readers in your class and um, you feel like they could, they could um, get more information out of these articles, that's also an option. And obviously the um, reverse is true as well. If you're in middle school and you feel like, um, you know, your students would do better with the level one version, that works as well. And then um, with Britannica, they also have this feature up here at the top, um, lesson plan browse. And they go ahead and give you pretty much all the lesson plans at first, but obviously if you come in and uncheck them and then only check the um, options that are relevant to you, you come down and press refresh and it'll give you lesson plans that that teachers have designed to go along um, with the resources in Britannica School Elementary. So 
Uh, one thing to keep in mind though with these is that while the, um, the content on the site is um, vetted, you know, everything's been verified that it's accurate, these have not. So these were just submitted by teachers. Um, and so I think it is definitely a good jumping off point if you're kind of struggling with how you would like to implement some of the resources that you're finding. Um, definitely a good place to go to kind of get your brain working and then you can um, adapt to your own lesson. But that is um, a quick overview of Britannica. So any questions so far based on what we've covered? Okay, so I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna try to save time for questions at the end as well. So um, if any pop up, feel free to put them in the chat box and we can come back to it. Okay, nothing um, one thing I'll, go ahead. Nothing yet. Okay. One thing I want to mention before I forget, um, this Gale Kids Info Bits. So this is actually going to be changing. We're going to be um, looking at one of the other Gale products um, for high school level um, in just a few minutes. But this is actually going to be coming, let's see, May the 29th. They're going to be changing this to Gale and Top Context Elementary. So um, if this is a database that you are familiar with, have worked with in the past, um, it's probably going to look a little bit different. I haven't seen what it's going to look like yet, so I, I don't know how different, but I'm assuming it's probably going to um, look very similar to the Gale um, in context middle and high school databases. But we are going to go over to the middle school resources now. And when we scroll down, you'll see in the middle of our page, they have a discovery services box. And so this is really nice. Um, this searches all of the different databases at one time. So I don't know about you guys, but they did not have this option when I was going through college. And so you would have to go and search each individual database over and over and over. Um, so this is really nice, especially at the beginning of a research project when you're kind of trying to get a feel for um, what information's out there, what direction you want to take. It just, it casts a really wide net. Um, so if I want to do a search on George Washington, for example, I can come down and see the different databases that it's pulling from. So for example, this one's from Funk and Wagnalls. Scroll down a little bit more. And we've got History Reference Center. A little bit further, we've got Galen Context Middle School. So these are coming from all of the different databases, um, which is the upside. The downside, though, you'll see they're not all relevant. So we've got the George Washington Bridge. We've got George Washington Carver, George Washington University. Um, and obviously, we could, you know, use our search uh, features and kind of narrow it down a little bit better than that if we really wanted to. Um, but just kind of wanted to show you guys that this is an option. Um, and another thing that I think is pretty neat is you can come over here and filter by databases. So when we do that, it tells you the number of hits that popped up in each database. So obviously if we had to almost 2,600 hits in History Reference Center, and we're probably talking about the George Washington that we're um, looking for there. Um, we're probably gonna wanna start there versus 135 hits in Britannica Online. So I do think this is kind of a neat little tool to see to the spread of where um, the content is across the databases. And then obviously, if you did wanna work with these results, you could come over and um, filter it down a little bit to be more what you were looking for. Okay. Let's see, so next I thought we would dive a little bit more into these EBSCO eBooks. All right, so if you click on the EBSCO eBooks um, icon from the elementary page, it will take you automatically to that database. I'm guessing because middle school is kind of in between um, elementary and high, it gives you this page, which has a lot more options on it. Um, but we are gonna choose this K-8 collection. And here it's asking me for my password again. Okay. 
Okay. All right, so this is an EBSCO product. So you'll notice um, most of the EBSCO products look very similar. You have your search bar here at the top. Of course, you can search for title, subject, author, any of the above. And if we scroll down, we can see um, some of what they call highlights. These, I feel like, change pretty much every time I log in. Um, so I don't know if it's just a... I don't know what kind of algorithm they use to figure out the highlights, um, but you can kind of scroll through and see some of the um, different variety of books that they have. Again, with the featured, they seem to mix it up a lot. Um, and then off to the side, you can browse by um, category. They do have a pretty good collection of picture books. So that's under the children's and young adult. Oopsie, not that one. Here we go, children's and young adult fiction. Um, if you wanted to search there, but we're gonna come down and look at how we would look at the science books. Okay, so this is the basic results page that pops up. Again, on the left-hand side, if we wanted to um, filter that a little bit more, we could. Um, if we wanted only books that have been published within the last five years, we could narrow that down. Um, and I also wanted to point out that you'll see this top result is um, a children's book, whereas if we scroll down, here's problem-based learning in the life science classroom, K through 12. This one's activities to create confident readers. So you'll see it's kind of a mixture of um, student materials as well as professional development materials. So for this database, I mean, the high school, I'm sure, could probably find things that were relevant. I don't know that I would just unleash the elementary school um, students um, in this database, but I do think it's really helpful for finding materials to share with them. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this top result grassland ecosystems. And we're going to scroll down to find out more information about the book. One thing um, that's really key to pay attention to is the publisher permissions. So we'll see here that the publisher has told us we are able to print, email, and or save up to 100 pages of this book. Obviously, there's not 100 pages. So if um, this is a really great option for if students don't have um, technology access at home, then they could um, go ahead, you know, you could print it out and get it to them that way, which is really nice because we don't, we're not able to do that with um, too many titles. Let's see. If we wanted to go ahead and save any of the information, we could go ahead and do that with Google Classroom and Google Drive here. Just be aware that the tools um, right here will only be saving this record. So um, probably not what you want to do. Um, you want to hold off on that. Okay. And then over here on the left hand side, you'll see the viewing options. So we've got PDF full text and we've got um, the full download option. So full download does not work very well with Chromebooks. Um, so I would not recommend students use this full download option at all, um, just because it's you have to have um, certain software and there's just some hoops to jump through. Whereas the PDF full text is um, pretty simple. It goes ahead and just pulls it up in your um, on your screen. And then again, specifically, if you're um, sharing this with students and you're having them view it through this website, if we get a full screen view, oh, and it's not gonna let me get there. Let's see, there we go. Okay, then we can adjust the size and make it a little bit easier to view. And we can read, maybe, there we go. It allows us to go through the book. All right, and then escape to get out of that full screen view. If we wanted to jump to a certain um, chapter, we could come over here and do that. So say that we were only doing um, a lesson specifically on grassland animals. If I come over here and click on that chapter, um, I can just share this chapter with students. Um, either through Google Drive or Google Classroom. 
So again, if I wanted to um, go ahead and link this site right here, I would click on Google Classroom. I would log in. And say I wanted to create a new material and obviously title it. And you'll see right here, it provides the link to this page. So it basically creates a permanent link that um, you can go ahead and put in your Google Classroom directly. Google Drive, what it does is it actually, instead of taking you to this website, it will um, capture the material itself. So I can decide whether I just want to save the page. Um, I can decide I wanna save this page in the next five pages or this whole section. And that it'll create a new folder in your Google Drive um, and it'll um, display in Google Docs. And so um, that's another option if you wanted to go ahead and export it to Google Drive. And then students wouldn't need to come to this website itself. It would just show the material in your um, in the drive document. Let's see, um, there's a permalink option here as well. That's everything I wanted to share with that section. Okay. Oh, there was one more thing I did want to show you in ebooks. So, say I got some information that I was looking for with ecosystems, but I wanted to see what else there was. So, I'm going to type ecosystems into my search bar. And just one thing to point out when I was browsing, it showed, I think, 54 um, items that were available from um, the science category. But when I do a search on ecosystems, it's showing 344. So I don't think it necessarily shows all of the materials available when you browse by category. Um, so if you're looking for something specific, I would suggest going ahead and doing a search um, and you might find more, um, more specific information for what you're looking for. And again, you could um, filter over here to the side you um, can filter by language. So uh, with ecosystems, there's only one Spanish material available, um, but the picture books um, is another area where they have a decent um, Spanish collection as well. Right, so there is our Spanish version of Max Axiom that we could share. And then last over here on the right hand side, um, I thought this was kind of interesting. I hadn't seen this before. There are news articles um, that have to do with your search. So if you want to kind of tie in some current events, um, you could kind of click around over here and um, share some news articles with your students as well on whatever topic you're covering. All right, so that is the ebook collection. Are there any questions um, so far from our ebook database? Are we doing okay? Um, yes, we do. Uh, okay. We have from Melissa, she's clicked on different links and each mm -hmm. one is not allowing her to open or sign in. Um, what for, links? For example, Kurtuk is not showing on the NC Digital Library. NC Digital Library. Do we need accounts for each link? Oh, um, all right. So what, are you talking about the NC Kids Digital Library? Melissa, do you want to pop on and turn your mic on and just maybe be or chat or add more to your chat? So, sorry, I had to leave that room. The kids were screaming. Okay, so I've tried NC Kids Digital Library and Kurtuk is not showing up. So I was wondering, do I need to make an account for each of like the links that so I the, click on? The NC Kids Digital Library. This is actually a different database that is offered through the state library. So um, you have to have an active public library card okay. to be able to use the NC Kids. Um, okay. And so uh, we found out, I think yesterday, that the um, the Currituck Public Library is allowing students to 
get library cards over the phone. So if you did want to use that database, um, you can have you know, students call the library and sign up over the phone. But yes, that's a great question. This is okay. Um, and then the Gale one file or the Gale. Mm -hmm. um, here, let me open that one up. It's saying it does not appear that your email account is associated with this library. And I use my school account. Mm -hmm. I signed in with Google. So I don't know if so with that, if I need to create accounts, that first um, sign in page, you want to type in the um, Wise Owl 19 password. Ah, uh, okay. That is a little confusing. Yep, to get into okay. um, Wise Owl itself, or like to get into the database, you have to use the Wise Owl 19 password. But then once you're gotcha. in, you can um, use your Google account to like create accounts or save to drive and all that. All that stuff. Okay. All right. Thank you. Sure. Good questions. All right, any other questions, Jill? No, nope, that's it. We're good. All right, so we will move on. Let's see. All right, yep, so we're going to move on to the um, Gale products. So I'm going to come over now to the high school page. And again, um, there is Gale in context for middle school and soon to be elementary as well. So even though I'm covering the high school, it's going to look really, really similar in format. Um, so I'll just go ahead and scroll down so you guys can see the different options that are available. And um, so as I said, NC Kids, you do have to have a public library card to access that. NC Live, this one is the same way. So uh, make sure if you do show this um, entire page to your students, make sure they're aware of that um, going into it. Everything else you should be able to access. But okay, so we're going to dive into Gale in context. All right. And this is another research database. And we have our search bar at the top, our advanced search options. But we're going to scroll down and um, browse a little bit. So similar to our other database, we've got some kind of timely, um, unfortunately in this case with the epidemics and pandemics, timely information. So if we wanted to have our students um, kind of jump into these, these are just some, some high interest um, topics for us. But then if we come down, we can see some other topics that are available. Um, I don't know why it only gives kind of some random um, random articles under these headings, but if you come down, you'll see that there's um, 992 topics. Um, so don't don't feel like you're limited to these these different options. Um, but I thought we would go and look at the space exploration and kind of browse and see what it looks like. So at the top, there's an overview. Um, it starts out just giving you about a paragraph, but if you click on read more, it'll take you to an article that gives you a um, pretty good overview of the information itself. And then next we have um, all of the different formats of um, the materials that are available. So you'll see there's 28 biographies, um, 645 audio files, all different kinds of um, information on space exploration. You'll see there's 4,232 magazine articles. So that's that's quite a um, large number of items. And so we are going to click on magazines. And when we click on any of these um, content formats, it gives us a little bit uh, more options to filter down, which in this case is obviously needed. So we can filter by publication date if we only want, you know, um, items that came out within the past two years, we could do that. Um, I really like that this allows you to filter by Lexile measure. Um, I, the eBooks, the uh, EBSCO eBooks database does not allow you to do that, at least not that I've been able to find. Um, so I feel like that's kind of one of the downsides, whereas this um, does allow you to choose a Lexile range and really make sure that you are um, finding materials appropriate for your students. Um, it has content level as well. The search within bar is also really helpful. So if you only wanted um, articles about space exploration during the Kennedy era, you know, we could type in Kennedy and really narrow our results down that way. And then there's this thing called Topic Finder, um, which I just discovered recently. And I think it is pretty neat. Um, 
So this I think is most helpful for students if they are, you know, kind of know what they're interested in, but aren't, um, haven't nailed down exactly a topic to research. And we're gonna search robotics. I know I'm switching it up from space exploration. All right. And it gives you a really great visual of the different topics that are available. And obviously the bigger, um, bigger kind of squares have um, more articles in that section. Um, so it gives you some subtopics. And say if I was interested in robotics competitions, I could click on that. And then it would give me articles off to the right about robotics competitions. And then say I wanted to know books about, or not books, articles about coding competitions, it would narrow it down even further. Um, so I think it's helpful, um, obviously, in kind of quickly narrowing down what you're looking for, but also just seeing a lot of the subtopics that are available. We can go to this wheel option as well. And just seeing how those topics interact. And same thing here. If I wanted to look at equipment industry, when I click on it, the results automatically pop up off to the side. So that is a neat little feature that um, is kind of hidden a little bit. I, I did not um, I did not kind of come upon it intuitively. So I wanted to really make sure we pointed that out. Okay, so I've got my magazines narrowed down and say I wanted to look at this article and use it with my class. So if I wanted to share this website itself with my class, I could come up here and share it directly to my Google Classroom. I could download it um, and then I could also print or get the link. But like I said, this will give you, these are all sharing the website itself. And I believe, well, yeah, I'm pretty sure they would, they would have to know the password um, as well to be able to access the information once they link to it. Whereas if we scroll down a little bit, obviously all of the information about the article is up here at the top. If we scroll down, if we just wanted the article itself and we come up here and click on Google Drive, this will send um, just this to our Google Drive. It'll um, again, create a, a folder and put it into a Google Doc, which we could share directly with students. Um, so that again helps if you don't want to um, have them navigate to the, this database site necessarily, you can just share the information. Same thing, you can just download the information, upload it to your site if that's easier for you. And this also has the translate option. Um, same idea, choose whatever um, language that you would like to translate it to. Okay, and the um, font size is able to be adjusted. And then it also has the read aloud feature here. Let's see. All right, so we're going to navigate back to our home page. Okay. So I think, oh, uh, there was one more thing. So the highlights and notes up here. So you can um, kind of mark up whatever, uh, whatever article that you are working on, um, but just keep in mind that it automatically deletes any highlights or notes that you make um, when you sign out of the um, site. So if you do choose to do that, just make sure that you go ahead and, you know, you could go ahead and click that Google Drive option and save it to your drive and it'll save those notes and highlights um, with it. Whereas if you sign out, when you come back, those won't be there anymore. Okay, so that is Galen Talk Context. And like I said, that is really, really similar to the middle school and um, I'm assuming elementary level two, obviously at a much um, less complex level. Uh, but any questions on Gail in context so far, Ms. Jill? No, nope, no questions posted. Okay. Just uh, an acknowledgement of the awesomeness of the resources there. Awesome, okay. Let's see, so we are going to 
Now move to some professional, um, professional resources. And again, you can kind of get to these um, places from different ways, but I like using this bar up here at the top. So I'm gonna go to professional. And we're going to dive a little bit into this publication finder. Okay. Again, it's asking for my password and you guys can see here again, it's all lowercase, all one word, why is it all 19? Okay, so there is um, the browse option here. You can see all of the different content areas that it has. So this, um, this kind of uh, pulls together all of the different publications that are available across the collection. So kind of similar to the um, search bar um, that I showed you, the discovery search bar, where it doesn't matter which database it's in, um, they all pull from here, but it um, collects all the different publications. So you can browse. Um, it's a little tricky though, because you'll see like mathematics, there's 921 um, different publications. So it's a little bit easier if you know what you're looking for. Um, so I just thought I'd show you some a um, couple of the more popular ones. So you can find Scholastic Math, which I am told a lot of math teachers use um, on here. So we do a search and it'll obviously show you the different results. I'm going to click on Scholastic Math Magazine and you'll see it showing that there is full text access. Um, it's really important to pay attention to the dates. Um, you'll see here that all of these have um, articles from 1999 to present, but a lot of times um, it might be limited number of years. So for example, it might have um, 1999 through 2013, um, and it might vary in between the different um, database results. So you wanna make sure if there's a specific issue that you're looking for, if you're looking for you know, the issue that came out last month, um, make sure you're paying attention to that off to the side because it might um, might help you decide which database to use. Since these are all the same, it does not really matter which one we choose. I'm going to just choose the top option. Okay, and then it's going to show all of the different issues, um, the years that are available. If we come up here to the share box, we can actually create an email alert so that it will email um, you whenever this um, database is updated. So when they go to add um, whatever the next issue that's available, um, they will go ahead and send you an email automatically so that you know you can go and check it. Or you can um, just copy and paste and um, bookmark this link. And that way you'll have it on your computer. You can go and check it whenever it's convenient for you. So I'm gonna come up here to issues. When I click on the year, it gives me the different um, issues that were released in 2020. I'm just gonna click on the most recent issue. And it gives me re my results. Again, this is an EBSCO um, database. So it looks a lot like the ebook database that we looked at. We can refine our results over here on the left-hand side. Um, but I'm just gonna pull up the top article. So we can either open it in HTML full text and it'll bring it up within um, your window, but it does not include illustrations. So I don't um, recommend using that one unless you have to. Um, but when we use the full text, the PDF full text, we are able to see it just as we would if we actually had the magazine in hand. Um, so this is something you'll see again, we've got our Google Classroom and Google Drive options. So we could share this directly with our students. Um, we could create a link if we wanted to do it that way. And when we scroll down, we'll see it has our copyright information. Um, so it says that it may not be copied or emailed to multiple sites or posted to a listserv without the copyright holder's uh, permission, but we may print, download, or email articles for individual use. So we are covered there, um, obviously, just like anything else that you just don't wanna be posting it on a public website um, that just anybody could go to. 
The other nice thing about the PDF uh, full text is you can navigate within the magazine a little bit easier. You don't have to keep going back to that results list. Um, I could click on this article and look it over and pretty much just kind of like read the entire magazine right here. So here's um, articles one through five. I could come over here, look at articles six through nine and navigate it that way. If we wanted to download the whole thing, we could do that as well. Just download the PDF and um, just post that to your Google Classroom. That's another option. All right, so we're going to go back to the results list. Let's see. So National Geographic is another, National Geographic Kids is uh, another pretty popular option. Let's see. But when we pull that up, oh, I accidentally searched. So you'll see I searched just this database. I don't want just this database. I want to search my publication finder. There we go. And you'll see they have the Spanish version available. They've got um, National Geographic for little kids. They've got all these options. But when we go to look at the record itself, you'll see this has um, full text delay three months. Um, so again, just kind of pointing out, it's important to kind of look off here to the side. Um, so when we look at it, it has, um, I think, most recent, yep, here we go. So the most recent article that we have or issue that we um, can access is November 1st, 2019. So not that big of a deal, but um, just kind of pointing out it's important to pay attention to the information to the side, especially if you're looking for a specific um, article in that publication. Let's see. Okay, so yes, that is Publication Finder. And I am going to, whoops. I'm going to go back to our professional resources. There we go. All right. And I'm going to dive deep into one more um, resource. And then I'm going to kind of just kind of touch on some of the other resources. So if there's any questions, you can go ahead and type them in the search box. And I should have plenty of time to get to those. All right. So this is the PBS um, videos database which I actually just found this recently. I didn't realize that we had full access to this. Um, and they've got some really great resources. So you'll see um, they've just got some random videos on the, um, on the main page, um, but you can obviously search or browse. So I'm going to first pull up some early elementary resources. And it tells me that there's 3,475 videos. So um, it's kind of, if you do it this way, it's kind of a hodgepodge. Um, but I did just want to show you what it looks like if we jump over here and look at the video itself. Maybe. Let's try that again. There we go. There we go. Okay. So I, it kind of reminds me of YouTube a little bit. It's got the related videos off to the side. If we come down, we can see the information below about the video itself. And then we can also see the standards um, that it aligns with. There's a download option here. Um, and when we, let's see, I think it's on the about page. Oh, here we go. Uh, we can see our copyright um, permissions here as well. So it says that we are permitted to stream, download, and share, which is good news for us. Um, so I know Shelly did a really great overview of the Learn360 um, app. And so this is another, um, and that was a great place for we, where we could go to get um, videos. So this is another great option for looking for video resources that we can share and not worry about copyright infringement. And again, we can share directly to our Google Classroom here off to the side. And I also wanted to show you guys when we look on the subjects bar, 
there are so many subjects available and you know it's not just early elementary i know at pbs we kind of think of like the littles but um we see that we've got high school algebra resources um elementary social studies uh world history it's just kind of I, w I was just really impressed with the different variety of options that are available. Um, so I thought we would look a little bit, let's look at this reading foundational skills. All right, so when we pull that up, we can even break it down even further um, if we are going over phonological awareness. We can look at only videos that have to do with that and um you know post things or post videos that are go along with whatever lesson that we're covering Let's see if we come up here by type you can see all the different um, formats that are available so it's not just videos um, there's also interactive lessons where the students can go in and watch like a short little video and then they actually participate in like a game um, that goes along with whatever the lesson was about. There's lesson plans. These media galleries, these are um, collections of videos. So another one I saw was on like counting and numbers. And so it's a collection of like eight videos um, that are from different, um, like the different TV shows itself, but that all cover numbers. And so it'll give students kind of more so an overview of a, cer a certain topic. Um, but yeah, there's just so much stuff that's here um, that I did not realize is here. Um, let's see, I think that was everything I wanted to point out here. So any questions about the PBS video site? Okay. Okay, no, we're good. Fantastic. So just a few more resources that I wanted to um, point out were here that are really neat. Um, but they just might be a little bit more specific to um, your content. Um, so the NC Digital Heritage Center, actually, let me first show you real fast. The NC Resources. Um, the NCpedia in particular, I've used that um, quite a bit. Uh, but all of these resources are pretty great if you are covering um, North Carolina history or um, just information about our state. Um, this is some really great information that you can kind of direct students here and you know that they're going to be getting some quality information. Especially NCPDA, I feel like, um, is very child friendly, which isn't necessarily always the case. All right. This North Carolina Digital Heritage Center. Um, this is really neat too. It has collections of um, newspaper articles um, and full text versions a lot of the time, um, yearbooks, different memorabilia. So if you go in and you um, went and looked at like Curry Tuck memorabilia and it has um, different letters, a lot of them um, came from the Curry Tuck um, Public Library, um, but different letters. I think it said like there's like things that were written on napkins, like there's all kinds of really cool um, resources there. And obviously, especially not right now, uh, we can't take a field trip to the library just to look at um, those primary sources. So I think this is a great alternative um, in finding some relevant information that students might get um, excited about with local history. Um, so the this NC Wise Owl Toolkit, I will bring that up just so you guys can see what it looks like. This is um, pretty much a collection of tutorials, um, graphic organizers, um, there's webinars, there's all kinds of information about how to use all of the databases that are on um, the site. So specific, or particularly if you are in a content area, um, that's a little bit more specific that I didn't cover. So like History Reference Center, for example, if you're a history teacher and you really wanna learn more about that, if you come in here and look at um, tutorials and guides, then um, you should be able to find all kinds of information about using it. Same thing, um, this instructional support has a lot of great materials. Let's see, so you can click on these and um, 
find those materials as well as, for example, they've got scavenger hunts, lesson plans, um, just tons of information about how to um, implement and use the, the resources that are available. Um, so yeah, that is the toolkit. Oh, and just a side note, um, I went on and looked at this COVID-19 resource center and um, I found there's some Gale eBooks, uh, professional development eBooks that are available that um, aren't normally. And I found some really great resources like the Shake Up Learning eBook um, by Casey Bell is actually in there, which I've been wanting to read. So um, definitely check that out if you're looking for some professional development books that um, are for free. We don't have to buy them like we normally would. Uh, let's see any other things I wanted to touch on this go open NC. Um, so this is if you know anything about OER open education um, resources, it's um, kind of like a crowd sharing of like lesson plans and materials that teachers create. Um, so you can kind of go on there and see if there's any lesson plans that are um, going in the direction um, of a topic that you would like to teach. And then um, Eric, the Education Resources Information Center, um, I'm sure most of us are familiar with, um, but this is more so like journal articles. If you are um, looking for some professional development on like a new area, so say you wanted to look into um, problem-based learning, you could go in and search and just kind of see what, what other teachers are doing, um, what the research is saying is the best practices around that, um, that sort of thing. Um, I think that covers everything on the professional development side. All right. So any, um, any questions on any of the databases I just talked about? I know I've been doing a lot of talking. I <laughs> there's so much on here. I really wanted to make sure that there was like something for everybody. There, I, know, I think you did a great job sharing, um, you know, making it accessible to everybody and sharing relevant um, items. It is a huge amount. It's yes. can be overwhelming if you didn't even know this existed. Right. So um, we really appreciate you sharing that information with us. And um, if they have, you know, follow up questions, then maybe we could do, a, you know, another session um, later based on, you know, more specific information if they need it. But I, th I think you did sure. a great job. And thanks, Jill, for helping facilitate the chat. Glad to. Awesome. Okay, well, I will, I'm going to put my email address, let's see, in the chat box. So let me stop presenting. There we go. That way, if you have any, like, specific questions that you would, um, like to ask, well, it's probably going to get lost in the chat box, but it's Kay Lancaster at currytalk.k12.nc.us. Um, so feel free to shoot me an email and um, I can try to help answer your question. Um, but yeah, thank you all for coming. Um, I hope that, like I said, I hope that everybody found something that they could use and take back with them. And um, I hope everybody enjoys the rest of your day. Thank you.